Hello people! Today we're going to have a little bit of Christmas sparkle. And obviously I'm doing my own nails this time, so let's get started. I'm going to start off with base coat or base color coat of this hollow glitter. Uh, now the idea for this design was inspired by a set I saw on Instagram and I stupidly didn't get a screen capture on it. But the lady had done a uh, regular silver glitter undercoat like this and then she used black to do the fade and it looked really and then she stamped like a black uh, fishnet pattern on it and it looked really sharp I really liked them I, I failed to take the screenshot and I don't remember who it was so um, I want to make sure she gets credit so if you guys happen to run across that anywhere somebody tag me so I can give her credit somewhere but anyway, this is coat number two now of the hollow glitter. Now I wanted, I went with a hollow glitter uh, instead of regular silver glitter like she used because I wanted a little more sparkle and shine for Christmas. And before I forget, this set took me four hours and 15 minutes. Now you could easily shave the 15 minutes off and maybe a little bit more because I was bouncing back and forth between uh, my fingernails and my toenails when I was doing this so that used up some time plus I had uh, some issues okay we're going in with coat number three of this glitter I wanted a nice fairly solid coating of this so three coats we did um, as I was saying uh, I've completely lost my train of thought well I'll come back to it hopefully um, anyway oh yeah there was some I had ran into some issues uh, that I was not planning on so that took longer plus uh, this set while it ended up with crystals on it that was not in my game plan either <laughs> so that ended up taking me easily an hour to do all the crystal cuffs on here so you could, if you don't want to do that part, you can shave off a good bit of time that way. Okay, we're going in now with red polish just at the cuticle area. Now I had a little bit of a learning curve on this because I don't usually do like a fade like this. Um, but secondly, um, the ones on this hand got like brought down a little bit farther down the nail than I really wanted them to be the ones on that I did with my offhand actually came out better surprisingly so if you stay tuned to the end of the video the ones I did with my offhand are mostly the green ones you'll that picture is going to be at the end and the good hand was here at the front of the video okay anyways moving on we're going to we're using an ombre brush obviously as you can see and I'm just pulling color down part way down the nail and I will clean my brush off as needed now I thought about when I was originally wanting to do these I thought of using like a dark burgundy red and a forest green because I thought that would give it a like a more sophisticated color palette but my stamping polish I only had what happened what happened okay sorry about that the thing just froze up on me uh, my stamping polish I only had a green and a red that were the traditional Christmassy green and red so since I needed the stamp to match this fade part at the top I had to go with those colors but I think it would have looked uh, a little nicer with the darker ones but anyways we're just doing the same thing on this one And like I said, this one went, these guys on this hand went a bit farther down the nail than I was really uh, originally planning on them to go. But normally I would have done a fade kind of a thing with a sponge. And I did try that at the beginning of this part. It just wasn't working for me. Um, if I was able to do it on press-ons instead of my own nails, I probably could have done it better with the sponge. But I was just making a humongous mess with it on here. 
so that's why I went to the ombre brush and there's what we are so far and then the other ones we're going to alternate with the green like this hand is going to be mostly red the thumb will be green on this hand though and the other hand is going to end up with mostly green see now I've got way too much of that green on there <coughs> Um, now, as I was saying, the stamping polish that I needed to match these colors, the red one matched perfect. You couldn't see after I stamped where the where the stamping ended and into the fade. But the green one, the stamping polish was just a skosh darker than, than this green I'm putting on right here. So you could see the stamp design on top of the fade a little, which I wasn't liking. So I had to go over it again with, with this green which you'll see me do later on. So I think it would have probably been better maybe to do the stamping first and then do this this part because that way I could have covered up uh, the green stamp part better. But as I was watching her tutorial on her doing her set, well, her one nail, she only had the one nail thing, but um, she did the, the fade first and then stamped the black on top, so that's the way I did it. Okay, and we should be about done with that, and then we'll be curing those. There we are so far with that. Okay, this is plate number three. This is where the problems had started. I had a, I had a really cute plate of... Christmas designs that I wanted to use but I could not for the life of me get any of the images to pick up so then I went on to plan B it's a different plate and I had the same problem I don't know what was going on so this is plan C now this plate actually did work for me and they picked up very nicely so once I got this plate going things went a lot smoother we're just going to pick up the design. We're just going to stamp it right on top. You'll see that matches that red on the top perfect and it just fades right in. Now I wanted them to be, I wanted each nail to be different with a different pattern. Like on this hand and then on the neck, the other hand, I just swapped the colors out and did the same patterns. But I kind of, um, to me, this is kind of like looking like maybe wrapping paper I guess with designs on it this is me trying to figure out which one I want to use again or use for this now I think it's this one yes I didn't quite get enough stamping polish on there I try to only put as much on as I'm actually going to really need because you really don't need to glom a whole bunch of it on there. You're just wasting polish if you do it that way. Because I've seen some people paint the entire image with the polish and then you're scraping like three quarters of that back off. So it's just a waste. Anyway, there's that one. Now this is regular stamping polish here. This is not um, gel. And that's how I clean my stamper. I have a little mini lint roller. I've got quite the supply of those. As I think I've mentioned before, my mom likes to put those in my Christmas sock every year. So, and I rarely ever use them for what, for what the main purpose is, but I do use them for my, my stamping stuff. Now I tried a couple of images uh, for the next one that's going to be green and I, I didn't like the way they looked so I have edited that out or you're going to see the final one that I ended up with. And this is the stamping polish brand that I'm using for these. I forgot to show you the red one. There it is, the same company it's called Creation. Whoopsie, upside down. And we're going to pick up the green now. And there we are. And we're going to put that right on here. Okay, and 
there we go now see you can see the stamp there at the top how it shows over the green so we're gonna fix that in a bit here possibly right now it looks like right now I had to edit so many things out of here that I had done out of out of order and things uh, so I kind of lost track of what's where now okay and I'm just gonna do the same thing I did at the beginning with that I'm gonna put some at the top and then I'm gonna fade it down over that you can still see the stamp through it a bit but it's not as bad as it was initially and I'm a little bit more now I tried uh, when I took my pictures for these outside I was hoping with the sun it was going to pick up the the sparkle of the hollow glitter but no luck okay now I'm going to be using these two bows neither one of them are the color I need and I don't have a mold to make these myself so I'm going with these that I already have I'm just going to paint them to match the red and the green I've sped this up obviously <laughs> We're just going to do this so I can get end up with what I need at the end. Okay, that one is going to be ready for curing. And then we got the green one. Now the green polish did not cover as thoroughly. It's a little thinner, uh, a little less pigmented, I guess. So I did do a two coats on this green one. I don't... I don't think I showed the second coat. It's possible I did, but I don't think I did. And those will go in to cure together. Now moving on, while those are doing that, we're going to move on to doing the ribbons for the, the Christmas present accent nails. This hand, as I said earlier, is going to be the red one. I'm just kind of blocking out where I want them to be and then we'll finish them off here in a second. And I wanted the bows to stay near the top of my nail which is why I'm not making this cross like right at the middle of the there instead and I know going in that these bows are likely going to get caught on things that's just the nature of how they are so I'm prepared for that if you're not prepared for that you could do a painted on bow but I did not do it that way if you don't want the 3D bow sticking up that would work just as well. I don't think I've ever tried painting a bow myself by hand, so I don't know what it would look like, but I wanted the uh, 3D ones on mine, so that's what I did. Also, make sure you get your ribbon wrapped around that free edge down here so it looks cohesive. And when you're happy with it, go ahead and cure that. Clearly I wasn't happy yet. At least while you guys are watching me do this, you get to see the sparkle of the hollow glitter for the most part. Alright, I guess I am showing you the, uh, the second coat on this green bow. I tried not to get a whole lot of polish in the middle, that middle part where there's going to be a crystal in there because I didn't want it sitting up on top. I wanted it to go down in the, in the dip right there. Um, these little pre-made bows I got off AliExpress quite some time ago. Um, and I just, I just use them here and there. Okay, now what we need to do is flip over this red one 
obviously there's some parts that didn't cure on the bottom part. I'm going to flip it over, I've cleaned my fingers off, and now we're going to paint the underside because being that these do not lay flush on your nail and it sticks up on the edges, you're going to see parts of the underside, so we have to paint that too. Is trying to fall off of that nail stand and I'm trying really careful not to let that fall off and get on me. Okay, and then I'm going to do the bow, ribbon on the green, the, on the other hand for the green one. So you guys are going to get to watch me awkwardly paint with my off hand here. <clears throat> Frankly, the, uh, the fades and stuff I think came out better on this hand than on the other hand. I think maybe because I have a softer touch with this hand, I'm not, um, you know, because I'm, I'm purposely being more careful because I know it's kind of gets wonky. Whereas if I'm using my good hand, I just go for it and see what happens. And since I do have more control that way, for the most part, anyway. Okay, now I've gotten a polish bottle out to balance this finger on because I was having a hard time leaning way down there to look at it so I could see it up close more. And now we got to go for a different angle here. <laughs> oh, this is truly a labor of love, I gotta say. <laughs> Because all this awkward craziness here, uh, if you didn't love what you're doing, uh, you would not put up with this for very long, I don't think. And this would be infinitely easier to do working on a set of press-ons and then gluing those on uh, than doing them onto my own fingers. At some point, I'm going to get to the point where I don't want to do deal with the poly gels anymore and I'm just going to make my own press-ons and glue those on. Um, they, they've come a long way on the glue. I've been using the solid gel glue um, and I have discovered that you can use it with press-ons because somehow it cures even through the polish of whatever you've got on, painted on your press-on nail because I tried it myself to see and the, the, it's, they stay on really well. That stuff is, is not coming off. I'm not getting any lifts. I'm not getting pop-offs. Um, so... I'm going to test it out uh, when I do my mom's Christmas set. When I put those on her, I'm going to test out the gel glue on uh, the solid gel glue on her because she is really hard to keep nails on. So, I guess that'll be the true test. The thing that makes me a little leery of that though is because that you got there's a little bit of work involved in getting them back off after when you want to take them off, and I'm not sure she's going to want to do that. So, we'll see. But if I can get them to stay on her, that, that, that's like I'll be winning the war. <laughs> Not just the battle, but the whole war. Because I swear, every time I put them on and I think they're on there really well, you know, I, you know, I go to bed that night, I come back in the next morning and she's got, you know, one or two laying on the, the kitchen counter. Oh, they popped off. I go, what, what are you doing to cause them to pop off so much? So I'm just doing my regular stuff. Well, gee whiz. <laughs> and we're just going to clean up this bit at the end. And that's going to get cured. As soon as I finish cleaning this off of here. Okay, moving on. Now we're going on with the top coat. Which, frankly, I could have waited with the top coat. But... See, at this point, I hadn't decided to go with crystals on the uh, crystal cuffs yet. So that's why I'm top coating, because I'm thinking, okay, all I got to do is glue the bows on and I'm done. But as I was top coating these and I was looking at them, they just felt kind of unfinished to me around that top part. And I just wasn't, uh, just, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm liking it. And there's nothing worse than spending hours on a set of nails and you get done and you're like, you know what, I don't really like these. They didn't come out the way I wanted. I hate that when that happens. There have been times too when I've done that and I hated it so much that later that night I stripped everything back off to nothing and then the next day went back in there and went in with a whole different design. 
That doesn't happen often anymore, but I, I used to do that quite frequently. Okay, we're moving on now. We're going to glue the bows on. And I think at this point I, I was deciding, okay, I'm going to do a crystal cuff on these. Just a real simple one. Thinking, okay, it's going to be quick. But doing it on almost all the nails, like eight nails had cuffs on them. That, that added uh, probably a good hour. So anyways, I've put a pretty hefty uh, blob of glue on for this, for the bows, because I want to make sure they're on really good. I'm going to get that lined up where I want it, and then I'm going to cure that right away. And now I'm going over the bow with the clear, co uh, the clear top coat, so I can make sure to protect the polish. And this is the tempered top coat, so it's a hard gel protect it hopefully from chipping off of that bow because it's going to look really bad if it does since it's, the bow is actually pink. I want to get that on there and then I will cure that again. As soon as I'm done messing around. Okay, moving on now. We're using these crystals. These are AB clear crystals in various sizes and some silver caviar beads and I'm just going to show you on the pinky nail and then the rest I'm going to do off camera because I don't want to make you guys sit through um, the good bit of an hour of that. <laughs> so what I did too is I would get the cuff on this one and then I put the crystal in that bow then I cured both, I flash cured both of those for 30 seconds. Then I did the cuff on the next nail, flash cured that one. And then by the time I got to the index finger, then I cured all four of those for the full cure of 90 seconds that I do for the glue. Or yeah. So you could you could cure each one individually if you want. Um, I just don't like to that 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 takes a lot longer to do it that way, frankly because you're waiting 90 seconds on each nail whereas if you just do your 30 second flash that'll hold everything in place and you put them back you know as you're going along by the time you get those four done you got your whole hand in there then you know give it the full cure because otherwise it just takes forever and now we're going in with the caviar beads and this is this for me is the time consuming part because getting these things on there I just try to get them at first in the vicinity of where I want them to be and then at the end I'll go along and uh, tuck them all up nicely in between there where they're supposed to be and move anything around that needs moving at that point before I give it the cure and adding glue as needed If I, I I thought at first that I had recorded two two different nails of doing the cuff and I was going to speed them up after this one but then I decided only to show you guys this one because it's a cuff you guys have seen them seen me do them a gazillion times now and I'm sure you know how to do it and for those that don't don't usually do them that they're real easy to do they're just time consuming. Oh, I forgot to mention too, I used AB crystals for these because I figured that that would tie in better with the hollow glitter and give it a little bit of color, colored sparkle to it. Okay, now I'm, I think I've got them all on there, so now we're going to go back and try to get them all moved around and tucked in where I want them. Oh, that one's off again now. More glue is needed. Okay. Oh, I seem to be missing one there. 
<clears throat> there we go okay now I'm gonna put the one in the in the uh, the bow as soon as I'm done messing around with that okay we're just gonna put a little blob of glue right in the middle of that little dip Of course there was a hair there was other hairs that I pulled out along the way but I edited those out and we get glue in there now we're gonna get the crystal on there and then I'm gonna cure those two like I said I'm gonna flash them for 30 seconds then we're gonna move on. then well I moved on to the green one but you won't see all those okay and that will be done I will get the rest of those done. I was trying to show you guys the sparkle there. I could just sit and look at the hollow glitter sparkle, sparkle when there's a nice light shining on it for a long time. I guess I'm easily amused. Okay, uh, this is the final top coat now. Now, I should have just waited before had I known I was going to do the crystals like this, I would have waited and uh, did my top coat at this point. But we're just going to butt it up to the edge of those crystals and caviar beads. And it will also help to hold the caviar beads on there. I usually don't lose any crystals, but I may lose a couple caviar beads. Usually the ones at the very end of the row there. And in fact, I do have a couple that are off here. I need to re-glue. And there we are, all finished. E Time consuming, but fairly easy peasy. If you like this set, please give me a like. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more, I upload uh, on Saturdays every week a new set. So I hope you guys like them. I'm going to have one, maybe two more sets of Christmas nails, and then I will be on to winter stuff. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye-bye.